Good afternoon. I am the U.S. Ambassador to Sweden, Mark Brzezinski, and I want to thank all of you for joining us on this, for this very special live viewing of the Days of Remembrance commemoration at the U.S. Capitol Rotunda in Washington, D.C. I'm pleased and honored to see members of Raoul Wallenberg's family with us here today. Together with people who actually met Raoul Wallenberg in Budapest and who were saved by him. In addition, I would also like to welcome other Holocaust survivors to this event, together with members of the Swedish National Committee for the Raoul Wallenberg Year, the diplomatic community, and students from schools around Stockholm. Remembrance is essential to avoid future atrocities. This year, the theme for Days of Remembrance is rescuers. We honor in Sweden this year and in Washington, D.C. this day, Raoul Wallenberg, a diplomat who chose not to be indifferent and to rise to a higher moral calling. We remember and revere this courageous man whose efforts saved thousands of Hungarian Jews from the Holocaust. Wallenberg paid with his life for his commitment to basic values. Today at Yad Vashem, the Holocaust Memorial in Jerusalem, you will find not only Raoul Wallenberg's tree planted along the Avenue of the Righteous, but also 2,000 other trees and 18,000 other names engraved in the walls of the Garden of the Righteous in remembrance of those who risked their lives to save European Jews from the Holocaust. Why did they do it? Because they all believed that one man can make a difference. That's the sentence written over the front door of the Raoul Wallenberg School in Brooklyn, New York, one of the many American institutions honoring Raoul Wallenberg. In 1981, the U.S. Congress, which today honors Wallenberg among other Holocaust rescuers, made Raoul Wallenberg an honorary U.S. citizen, at that time just the second in our history. The importance of not being indifferent is a timely and relevant operating principle in our relationship with the world today. Advancing human dignity and protecting universal rights is at the core of American values, and it is relevant to the challenges of our time. And now I would like to tell you a little about the ceremony we are about to view together. Since 1979 and the publication of the report of the President's Commission on the Holocaust, the United States has observed an annual Days of Remembrance of the Holocaust. The date of this annual observance corresponds to the 27th day of Nisan on the Hebrew calendar. It is the same date that Yom HaShoah is observed in Israel. Days of Remembrance is a national event that is enshrined in the U.S. law establishing the United States Holocaust Memorial Museum. The museum is responsible for organizing the event in the U.S. Capitol Rotunda and for encouraging U.S. states and municipalities to organize their own event. Today, we're adding to the broad reach of the Days of Remembrance through this event here in Sweden. The rotunda of the U.S. Capitol, where the annual Days of Remembrance ceremony is held, is considered almost sacred ground to Americans. It is exceedingly rare to have any outside event take place there. Special legislation is passed by the U.S. Congress each year to authorize the holding of the Day of Remembrance ceremony in the Capitol Rotunda. Members of Congress of both parties joined together to observe this event, and through the magic of technology, today we get to join them as well. In honor of Raoul Wallenberg, Sweden holds a very special place in this year's ceremony. Riksdag speaker Per Westerbury will be the first ever foreign parliamentarian to light a candle at the Days of Remembrance commemoration. Usually, only two people light each candle, a member of Congress 
along with the Holocaust survivor. Today, the first candle will be lit by three people. Speaker of the United States House of Representatives, John Boehner, Speaker Westerbury, and Helen, Helen Goldkind, a Holocaust survivor. Speaker Westerbury was invited to join Speaker Boehner and Helen Goldkind because of the Swedish connection with the rescue, especially Raoul Wallenberg. Emblematic of this, after her liberation by the British from the Bergen-Belsen concentration camp, Helen Goldkind was extremely sick and was taken by the Swedish Red Cross to recuperate in Sweden. To lead us into our participation in this year's Days of Remembrance event and its theme of honoring Holocaust rescuers, it is my distinct honor to share with you a very special video greeting from the President of the United States, Barack Obama. Hello, everyone. To all of you gathered today in Stockholm and to our friends around the world, it's an honor to join you in honoring the life and legacy of Raoul Wallenberg, son of Sweden, a citizen of the world, who reminded us of our obligations to our fellow human beings. When Jews in Budapest were marked with that yellow star, Raoul Wallenberg shielded them behind the blue and yellow of the Swedish flag. When they were herded on trains for the camps, he pulled them off. When they were sent on marches to their death, he followed with the food and water that gave them life. I will never be able to go back to Stockholm, he said, without knowing inside myself that I'd done all a man could do to save as many Jews as possible. And therein lies the lesson of his life. Not simply to bear witness to man's capacity for cruelty, but to have the courage to choose. To choose to do all we can do to summon inside ourselves our capacity for good. As we mark the centennial of his birth, as we observe Holocaust Remembrance Day in the United States, we reaffirm our duty. In the face of indifference, let us choose compassion. In the face of intolerance, let us stand against anti-Semitism and hatred in all its forms. In the face of oppression, let us defend the universal rights of all human beings. In the face of evil, let us refuse to be bystanders. Let us fulfill that solemn pledge, never again. All these years later, we still remember Raoul Wallenberg as he was, a young man in his early 30s who earned his place forever in the righteous among the nations. In all the years to come, let us, like him, find the same courage in ourselves to do all we can do and strive as nations and as individuals to be among the righteous. Ladies and gentlemen, as you saw in his video greeting, President Obama speaks from his heart, even as he speaks for us all, to remember the courageous and selfless acts of Raoul Wallenberg. I expect that the powerful ceremony we are about to see will lead us all to contemplate the importance of not being indifferent. Thank you again for being with us today.